Hi. Today on The Sweet Life of Steve, we're making side dishes, perfect for your holiday table. Roasted Brussels sprouts, sweet and spicy carrots, and a mushroom wild rice. We'll also make a super simple vinaigrette that we'll dress a couple of those dishes with, and a warm and spicy mulled wine to wash it all down. So whether you're celebrating Thanksgiving, Friendsgiving, or a Wednesday afternoon, these dishes are sure to please the pickiest of palates, and you won't find yourself saying, WWJD. What would Julia do? Never apologize! Let's mull over this wine, shall we? This one is really easy because you're going to pour all of these ingredients into your slow cooker and just let it kind of steep all day long. You can keep nursing it as you're drinking it, so when it's halfway full, Throw in another bottle of wine. I've got this great red, it's a Merlot, from my favorite winery, Harvest Ridge. Of course, any red wine will do. One whole bottle. To that, I'm gonna add about four tablespoons of simple syrup. You could use honey as well, but this obviously will dissolve faster because the sugar has already been dissolved. This is an orange liqueur from our favorite distillery, Winden. About half a cup. And then of course, since we're mulling it over, we need some spices. I've got cinnamon, cardamom pods, allspice, juniper berry, clove, and a little bit of star anise. I'm going to put all of these into a tea ball, not a tea bag, but a tea ball. And that will make it so much easier for serving because we don't have to worry about somebody getting a uh, rogue pod or something. We'll just drop that right on in. It can sit there all day and some of my cinnamon sticks, boop, boop, boop. Then I'm gonna float in some fruit. Apple slices, and then some orange slices. I'm using tangerines because there's not as much pith with these, where if you use, say, like a navel orange or something, there's a lot more pith, which is bitter. Put that on the slow cooker set to low. Once the wine gets warm enough, set it down to warm, and you can leave it there all day long. We're making our vinaigrette, and this one is super simple. It was actually our house vinaigrette when we had our bed and breakfast. We keep it on hand all the time still because it's something I love so much. It comes together in a matter of seconds. It's a little bit mustardy, a little bit zingy, a little bit herbaceous. It's wonderful, and it kind of can be put on everything. To start, I have an even mixture of olive oil and a neutral flavored oil like canola or grapeseed. Too much olive oil just can be a little bit too strong, and all of a neutral oil doesn't really have any flavor. So this is sort of a nice equal balance. To that, I'm adding some apple cider vinegar, and a little bit of white vinegar. Of course, this could also be like a champagne vinegar or something like that if you wanted to. Salt, some Dijon mustard, and then my herby things. In here I have all dried herbs. Of course you could use fresh herbs if you wanted, but who has those things on hand at all times? I know I certainly don't, so I'm using dry. Chives, thyme, tarragon, something else, pepper, mustard powder, garlic. There isn't a something else, I remembered all of them. And then of course I could mix this by hand, but I'm gonna use my handy dandy power tool, give it a little blend, and we're good to go. Perfection. Give it a little taste to check the salt level. Mmm, yummy! That is so bright and wonderful. This will keep in your fridge for up to a month, if it lasts that long. First up is our Brussels sprouts, which kind of get a bad rap because everybody thinks they look like little cabbages and they smell like farts. And that's true. But they're delicious. Today's recipes aren't really recipes. They're more what I call procedures. So there isn't exact measurements for any of this. This is more a look, taste, smell, and adjust accordingly type of situation. So we're starting with some Brussels sprouts that I have cut in half. We've got maybe 
a pound and a half here. And I'm just going to add them to a large bowl. All we need is olive oil, salt, and pepper. Since there isn't very many flavor additives here, you want to make sure you have the best of all those ingredients. I'm using this good quality olive oil. It's gonna give me lots of flavor. This is a piqual. It's a fresh press. It's got a little bit of a spicy note, which I love. I'm going to start by just drizzling a little bit. And I want to make sure that my vegetables are evenly coated. So start with less and we can keep adding. We obviously can't take away. Just give it a bit of a toss and see, is everybody coated with the olive oil, yes or no? In this case, no. So I will add some more olive oil. Now I can see everybody is shiny and glistening. Shiny, happy people. Isn't that a song? Is that a song? Some salt. You wanna make sure that everybody gets evenly coated. And fresh cracked pepper. That's about it. Toss until they're all well covered and coated. And now we will spread this out onto an aluminum lined sheet pan. So this principle works for pretty much any vegetable that you're going to roast. Make sure that everybody is spread out and they're not crowded on the pan. If they're too compact, they're actually gonna sort of release that uh, natural liquid in them and they'll steam each other. They won't really roast. It's like when you're on the beach and everybody's really, really crowded, you never get a good tan because the guy next to you is stealing the sun. That's a thing, right? Everybody is evenly spread out. Now it's time to throw them in the oven. 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 175 degrees centigrade until they are browned and delicious. You'll want to toss the vegetables about every 10 minutes until you've achieved your desired texture. When they are soft and a little bit charred, we're going to pull them out of the oven and then dress them with that beautiful vinaigrette we just made and throw them back in the oven again for a few minutes. Here we go! Boom, ta -da. Great! Okay, so we've gotten some good color on these. Nice and mm, delicious. To give a little bit of extra flavor, I'm just going to drizzle some of this tasty vinaigrette that we just made over the top. And we'll toss them around for a couple minutes, just let them sort of drink that up. And what I love to do with this, and actually all of the things we're making today, is to make them about three days ahead of time. Let these cool, and then you can store them in the refrigerator. Then the day of your party, you just warm them up again, and then you're ready to go. So in essence, these Brussels sprouts would have been cooked one, two, three times. Triple roasted Brussels sprouts. I love it. So you see, they've drunk up all the, these are good and drunk. <laughs> these guys are drunk. They have drunk up, drank up, sopped up all that vinaigrette. It's gonna add a really wonderful flavor to these Brussels sprouts. Now we're going back to the oven for a few minutes, about five at the most. What's next? It's carrot time. Now, these will be done the exact same way as the Brussels sprouts, meaning I'm gonna take my carrots and I'm gonna dress them and then I'm gonna put them on the pan and then put them in the oven. So here we go. Got these beautiful fingerling carrots. That's right, I said fingerling. And to that, I will dress them again with the olive oil first, making sure they're evenly coated. Toss to coat, same thing. Salt and some fresh cracked pepper. Now to this for my sweet element, I'm using some grade A maple syrup. You of course could use honey if you want, or even an agave, and some red pepper flake. Few pinches. I like it spicy. And again, just a little tossity toss toss. As with salads, it's important that you toss everything well. Spread it out onto your sheet pan. Get that delicious maple syrup, olive oil goodnessy over here. Make sure everybody is spread out so they get the benefits of that heat. And you're gonna stick them in the oven, 350 degrees, 175 Celsius and cook them until they're done, making sure that you rotate the pan about every 10 to 15 minutes and give them a little toss every now and then too. They'll appreciate it. All right, this one is a real fun guy. We're making a wild mushroom rice. 
Again, this isn't really a recipe so much as a procedure. I have this really nice wild rice blend. So it has white rice, brown rice, red wild rice, and black wild rice. And I'm making it according to the package instructions. However, instead of using water, I'm using a porcini stock. So here's what I've done. I've taken some dried porcini mushrooms and I've poured over about two cups of boiling water. Let that steep until it comes to room temperature. That's what I'm gonna cook my rice in. And it's gonna give this really wonderful, rich, umami-y kind of flavor. Umami-y is a word, right? Once that's cooled, strain it out. So the stock will go in with the rice and the hydrated porcini mushrooms will get folded in at the very end. That's gonna be a flavor base. Now, to that, I'm gonna add some sauteed mushrooms. I have chosen white button mushrooms and some baby portobello mushrooms. These are the cheapest mushrooms that you can get in your grocery store. And I've got a great little trick to add some extra flavor to them. What I've done is taken some of those dried porcini mushrooms and I've put them through my spice grinder to make a porcini powder. Once my mushrooms are sauteed, I'll add a little bit of that porcini powder and it's gonna give an extra special mushroomy flavor. Now, if you don't have a spice grinder, go out and buy one. You can almost always find them at the thrift store, at a yard sale. Sometimes when you buy a new house, you arrive and a spice grinder, it just happens to be in your cupboard from the people who lived there before because they wanted to get rid of it. If none of those things are an option for you, use your blender, not a food processor, because the blender base is very narrow. So all those portinis at the bottom will actually fine grind. If you put it in a food processor, they're spread too wide and they'll never get into a nice fine powder. Was that good information, everybody? Get your pan nice and warm. To that, we're gonna add a little bit of olive oil. Of course, you could use a neutral flavored oil as well, but I'm gonna try to get all the flavors that I can get. Into the pot go my mushrooms. And I'm gonna cook these on a relatively higher heat so I can get some color and some brownness because brown is flavor. So here's a little saute -y trick. We can let them sit for a little bit. You don't have to constantly stir, 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 stir. Don't, this isn't a wok. We're not doing a stir fry. This isn't at ridiculously high heat. We're gonna let them brown a little bit. Then we can flip them over a little bit more. Let everybody get in there. I'm gonna add salt right away because it's gonna pull out some moisture and a little bit of pepper. I'll come back and taste them a little bit later to make sure that my seasoning is good. While my mushrooms are sauteing, I'm gonna cut up my hydrated porcinis. Just a rough chop. And we're gonna throw them in there. And for extra mushroominess, about a half a teaspoon of that porcini powder. Oh, it smells so beefy in here. And there's no beef at all. That's just the magic of the porcini. Now, of course, you can experiment with all sorts of mushrooms. You can use oysters or morels or chanterelles, which actually sounds more like a drag king than a mushroom. I'd love to go see a show by chanterelle. Creminis, which are pretty much just baby portobellas, and all other slews of mushrooms that there are. Make sure they're not poisonous. This dish has endless possibilities. I'm gonna come in here and taste. Mmm. A little more salt. It's really important to taste your food all the way through. And I'm actually gonna add just a little bit more of that porcini powder. I wanna get smacked by the umami. Remember, never apologize. Just a couple more minutes until we've got brownie deliciousness, and then we're gonna set those to cool while we make our rice. My rice has finished and I've fluffed it a little bit. Now I'm going to add those cooked mushrooms. And my secret to this is some of that vinaigrette that we made. This is of course to taste, so start with a little bit, give it a taste, see if you think that it needs more. If you've got really picky eaters, you could do without, but it's an extra special ingredient. Delicious, look at that. Sneak a little tasty poo, shall we? 
a little bit of brightness from the mustardy vinaigrette, and then that umami from the mushrooms. I love this. And of course, we have our beautiful roasted carrots, a little bit of sweetness from the maple syrup, and some spice from that red pepper flake, and our roasted Brussels sprouts that have been drunk with that vinaigrette as well. All of these things you can make up to five days ahead of time for your holiday party. Just rewarm them up and serve them, of course, warm. This rice can be served cold or at room temperature. Sometimes what I like to do with the leftovers is toss it with a little bit of greens and make it into a salad. So you could do that too. You could also serve any of these vegetables at room temperature as well. Perfect for your holiday needs. Should I come in later? I think we're just going. You can come in whenever you want. All right, exiting. Maybe you should bring me a hot toddy. I have purpose. Honey! Why does she have that direction? Because it would be funny when you come in from that side and I'm looking over there and yelling, wouldn't that be hysterical? Okay, <laughs> We're not winning an Emmy for this. Honey! Hey! Oh, you brought me something to drink! Cheers! Cheers! Mmm! Oh, you can smell all of the cinnamon and the apples. That's loaded. Mmm! <laughs> delicious. Why is it spicy? <laughs> That's a lot. It's a lot of things going. It's delicious, wonderful. This would be so perfect for your holiday party. And speaking of your holiday parties, look, we've got something on the side. There was a joke there somewhere. Did I miss a line? You did, it's fine. We have um, sweet and spicy carrots, a uh, mushroom wild rice, and roasted Brussels sprouts. Which one are you gonna dive into? <sighs> Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts, I'll take a carrots. I thought you were gonna talk about how I don't like mm. mushrooms. I'm gonna talk about right now how you don't <laughs> like mushrooms and that's why he didn't pick it. <laughs> Rob doesn't like mushrooms, but these mushrooms are delicious. Take a little taste of of that. Mmm, so good. Oh, and good in there. But I have eaten this you have accidentally and liked it. Yes, for the most discerning of palates. And if you've been playing along, you might have noticed that all of these recipes today are vegan. It doesn't matter who's coming to your holiday party, you will please them all. So, as always, the recipes are in the description below. Like, subscribe, and comment. What do you have going on the side?